Hello and welcome to another edition of Sparky Help. This time the easy guide to three types of electrical induction. Let's first start looking at induction by motion. This involves with a magnet with a magnetic field which we need to move or rotate by a coil or you could have the magnet keep still and the coil pass round it but either way one of them physically needs to move because the magnetic field does not in a permanent magnet let's look at that then as we start to rotate the magnet to 90 degrees the flux lines pass the coils and create a maximum induced voltage when it passes round by 180 degrees it goes through zero the south passes round to a maximum peak and this creates a sinusoidal waveform so this is induction by motion examples of such generators and alternators this is how all of our electricity or the vast majority of our electricity is actually produced let's look at what happens this time then when you pass a current through a coil so you put a current into a coil and this is what happens when you put an AC supply onto it. As the voltage goes in, the current goes in, the magnetic flux lines go up, and the flux lines change direction each cycle. Let's look at that again. So as the voltage goes up, the flux lines go up and then reduce back down, and then they go negative, and the flux lines change direction, and so on and so forth. So every time you put an AC supply onto a coil, you get a change in current every half cycle, and the magnetic flux lines change direction each cycle also. So they go from no magnetism to full magnetism down to no magnetism, change direction, and therefore what you actually get is a north and a south appearing on, on this as we look at this screen would be top and bottom. Why do we interest in this one? Because it's the next particular one, it's mutual induction. Now we have a primary and a secondary winding of a transformer. This is where this would be used. And you have an AC supply goes onto the primary, and that will be the voltage in, which creates a magnetic flux line which changes. So this time something has to move, and this time it is the fluxes that change. As you can see, so as the magnetic field increases and collapses, that will induce a voltage onto this secondary output. So let's just look at that again. So look at the bottom left is the sine wave going in, and on the output, you induce a sine wave on the output on your secondary side. Obviously, this is just an illustration, but you get the point. Mutual induction is used in transformers. Let's look at the more tricky one out of them all, and this is self-induction. So here we are, we're going to look at the same coil, but this time I have the notation we use for the cross-section of a cut-through of a cable, and what we do is we show a cross to show current going into the screen, and a dot for the current coming out of the screen. So think of if you've just thrown a dart, and when you throw the dart, what you see as you throw it, you will see the flight, so you see the cross. The person you've thrown the dart at, if you are to throw a dart, not that you should throw a dart, but if you were to throw it, what they would see is the point, so they see the dot coming towards them. Other things we need to know, if we think of it as the cross, then think of a posi drive screw. Uh, it is righty tighty, lefty loosey, so as you screw something in, it's going into the uh, screen, that would go round in a clockwise direction so that's the magnetic flux lines that you get and if it's coming towards you then then that from their perspective it would be anti-clockwise so the flux lines that appear around the conductors and if we look at this then and we take it slowly as the current goes up the magnetic flux lines increase and then drop back down and then on the negative half of the cycle current changes direction and the magnetic flux lines go from zero to maximum to zero. Let's look at that again. So just watching that, as the flux lines 
current goes in, the flux lines increase to a maximum and then drop till they get to zero. They change direction and then go to a max in the opposite direction. Now, if we were to look at this, you would actually have a north and south. Let's just do that one more time. And if we look on this direction, flux lines travel north to south. We'd have north on the left hand side on the positive cycle. And then north would be on the right hand side of the coil on the negative half of the cycle in my particular drawing. So basically what you've now got then is you have a flux line changing with current. So what's the self induction? Well, as we've just seen in the previous two examples, to get any induction whatsoever, something has to move. Either the magnet has to move in the terms of induction by motion. In mutual induction, it is the flux line changing with the changing current. So this one is self induction, which requires a change in magnetic flux, exactly the same as in mutual induction. But instead of inducing into another coil adjacent, this one induces in the coils itself. So in each coil adjacent to the coil that is wound around it, this creates a back EMF. So as current goes in, the magnetic field goes up and this creates an equal but opposite back EMF. So as the sine wave starts to increase, the current starts to flow in and the magnetic fields get stronger. This change in magnetic field causes the back EMF, as you can see here, so an opposition to current flow. And this is studied in another video of mine. Let's just look at that again. Currents increase, the flux lines go up, and they induce a back EMF. The back EMF is equal but opposite to the current that created it in the first place and the voltage that created it. So you get this back EMF. Where does this apply? Any coil, any coil that you have, whether it be in a transformer, uh, in a winding of a motor, that has self induction and this back EMF that it creates has a major impact. So please watch out for this video on electrical inductors and RL circuits. This has been Sparky Help. Thank you very much. I hope this helps.